Welcome to the Mink and the Monk. My name is Brad Monkel. This is my co-host over here, uh, Matt Fink. And we are so lucky to be joined for our first Zoom interview with a legendary bassist, um, Bubby Lewis. There's so many things I could call oh, you. Man. I could call you, I could call you hip hop royalty. I could call you king of <laughs> king of nerds. Uh, one of the most I'll, po- I'll positive, <laughs> positive musicians or one of the most positive musicians I've ever heard speak and man. really just a nice guy. I appreciate you doing this, man. It's so I good to have you. The kind words, man. You flatter, you flatter the mess out of me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, you said that, uh, it's about 11 o'clock for you right now. It's 9 a.m. here. So I, I'm not good with time zones, but I can only assume you're over in Japan right now. Yep. Yep. In Tokyo or Chiba for now. Yeah. Chiba. Okay. Very cool, man. Well, uh, I mean, first of all, uh, how long have you been there? How is it going there? Um, and like, what is, are you just going back and forth regularly now? Um. So I, uh, me and my family, we actually decided to move here uh in may this was a for me it's been like a lifelong dream uh but if i just fast forward it the process started in 2020 during covid yeah (laughs) what a time right what a time so but a long story short we end up coming out here at the end of 2020 and we were trying to stay then but they sent all the foreigners home because of the pandemic and then finally they let us and everybody else in the world that was trying to live here basically come uh, earlier in 2022. So we came in May and I've only been back and forth to do like some gigs and stuff here and there, but uh, this is home now. So that's yeah. awesome. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Um, Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, man. And, uh, you know, as, as a fellow lover of Japanese culture, I, I, yeah. um, I, it's very exciting to see you interacting um, with, you know, Japanese musicians. I'm excited to talk about your new project, Silver Kid. Um, yeah. I'm excited to hear your new album you got coming up. But I wanted to ask a little bit first about, like, being in Japan mm. and the world being so crazy right now. Does yeah. how does how do international events look from to the Japanese people, like from a Japanese cultural yeah. lens? And is the is the media as sensationalist as like the U.S. media? You know, how 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 do events look from that side? I mean, if I'm just being 100 percent honest. In in my career that I've traveled the world, the U.S. just doesn't look that good. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just, you know, I'm just being transparent. Yeah, the crib doesn't look that hot, man. I mean, and, and, you know, the way they they see it from their point of view it's just like it's always like man it's a lot of stuff going on back there and it's like what can i say you know i'm just like yeah you know so um but here you know you don't really hear about too many things happening it's it's very it's it's really scarce here you know not a lot of crime and stuff like that things do happen everywhere around the world but you know it's uh it's it's night and day i'll just put it like i'm trying to think of like the nicest ways I could, <laughs> well I no i mean honestly. i mean i you you already hear a lot of great things about japan i mean like yeah. they say like it's the, the streets are cleaner people clean, clean up. Yeah. yeah like in school they're taught to clean up after themselves and there's general mm-hmm. things i would expect to just be mm-hmm. a little more polished but yeah. I, i'm not sure if it like you know if people there are as uh stressed out about like the ups and downs of world events or if they're like a little Um, more detached than americans are from the new cycle not so much stressed out i mean they just see a lot of what happens in america is just like a cultural thing you know like a lot of the the civil unrest and the you know the the new things that are like western views and stuff like that on on everything on society like they just look at it as like that's what they do in america yeah you know what i'm saying like and it's you know it's no you know i'm not about to bash america for everything it's just but there's a lot of values and stuff here that 
you know, they still hold near and dear, like the cleanliness stuff, you know, like yeah. the, and even like the idea of family and stuff is so, it's so important here, you know, and like, they love children, they adore children here, like you, you know, it's just stuff that I saw when I was a kid that I don't see anymore back in the States, it's, you know, they, they still are like, nah, this means something to us, the next generation means something, and they, there's like a <laughs> there's a cry in their government now because people aren't really getting married anymore. Like the men are just kind of working and they just want to just make they loot and get a cool little apartment and, you know, be single. So the government is paying people to have children, like to get married and have children. It's like, you know, it's just it's just different. And then back home, it's like bump getting married forget family you know what i'm saying like it's it's just a different different thing brother different things <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah very cool um I'm, I'm curious uh are there any other american musicians that like you who are also living in japan or come there frequently that you look forward to seeing that you that is like you guys connect almost more there than you would here um I mean, I haven't connected with too many. There's a few that left America like way back in the day. Uh, it's well, this guy. Well, you said what? my my um, favorite example would be mm -hmm. the late, great Paul Jackson, who was oh, living in Japan yeah. for the end of his life. My favorite bass player. Um, yeah. Not sure if you ever got yeah. to cross paths with him, but it's just it's a happening scene over there. I haven't I haven't crossed paths with him here. And then uh, what's his name from uh, Megadeth? Uh uh the guitar player he used to play matt would know better day. than me do you know that <laughs> uh <laughs> what's his name um megad that you're not talking are you I, I am i confusing that are you talking about dave mustaine but no 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 not dave mustaine uh because i thought on. i heard dave talking about that but <clears throat> it, ah, what is his name um I, I got a least it's gonna kill me. Hold on. Yeah, I know. We need a dedicated fact checker for the show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we get too um, many things wrong when we're talking about this stuff. Also, uh, just noticed your Ino, Inuyasha shirt. Very nice. Oh uh, yeah, bro. It's classic, <laughs> brother. It's classic. It's a classic. Okay. I'm looking. Hold on. I got. I have to figure this out. <laughs> I, I don't even know like any Megadeth. I'm the worst person for this conversation. I like missed out on that whole vein of Megadeth was never my scene either. So I, I don't know uh, uh, enough myself. So I hear you. Told me Dave Mustaine was in Britney Spears's band. I would also believe you. Marty Friedman. <laughs> oh, Marty. Oh, of course. He speaks Japanese. I've, I've yeah. seen him in interviews. Dude. Yeah, he, absolutely. He's been here for years he's been yep. here for years um yeah this dude is always on tv like yeah he figured out <laughs> he figured out the language everything yeah there's a yeah. great jazz pianist who uh i'm not sure if he's living there i know he tours there a lot david berkman i don't know if you've crossed paths with david i i haven't but i've heard the name for sure yeah, yeah. i mean i know he's originally from brooklyn but um he did get he, he married a Japanese woman, and I think his plan was to to live there. And I'm not sure if he actually ended up doing that. I, it Probably was children. pretty, yeah. It's pretty amazing, though. I mean, last time I had seen him, which was years ago, he was fluent, he's speaking the language, and and yeah. uh, that was his plan, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I get it, man. It's it's a guy I met that I toured with uh, with this big pop group out here called Exile the Second, but his name is Zandre. It's from Buffalo, and I, I let me see. He he used to play with like Earth, Wind, and Fire sometimes. A bunch of different people, and apparently he came out here to Japan and fell in love with it. This was way back in like the seventies, and I think in eighty, what did he say, like eighty two or something like that. He was like, "All right, I'm out of here," and been here ever since. So, yeah, I'd imagine yeah. you have a pretty unique perspective being from Flint living in LA oh. and oh. now <laughs> yeah I would imagine that you uh you have a pretty deep American experience that would I uh, com it been uh, compared to what it is in Japan I I presume that it's yeah. shockingly different oh big time I mean I'm I'm a country boy you know so I I I've experienced the country thing I experienced the fast-paced city 
like LA and but this place is like there is nothing that compares. Wow. <laughs> this is a massive culture shock for many people because it's just it's like you, like you go to LA, you look at downtown LA and it's like, man, you got this big city. Look at those big buildings just in that chunk, right? Yeah. But out here, every little district has a massive downtown LA plus Manhattan vibe to it. You Shibuya, Shinjuku, Akihabara, you got Odaiba, you got Nakameguro, you got Meguro, you got Shinagawa. Like, this is just Tokyo, right? Chuo, Chiyoda, Hibia, like all these different little tiny cities all have a Manhattan and downtown LA vibe, but it's clean, it's spotless. That's the only difference. Very oh, yeah. cool. Um, you know, back back on the topic of of uh, learning the language. Uh, I mean, I, I took like four or five years of Japanese in school, and I've lost nice. it all completely since then. <laughs> um, but is are like are you like how far along are you in that? Are you, how many kanji deep are you? Like how? I mean, I can only imagine being from Flint in LA. You've got a cool accent when you speak in Japanese. I mean, uh, I definitely got that country, <laughs> country black dude trying to speak Japanese for sure. Oh, I'm the, sure the ladies love it. <laughs> the kanji, bro, I can't do it. I like I I know a few characters like for age and like time. You know, that's about it for kanji. But my hiragana and katakana, I can read that like nothing. It's a piece of cake. Okay. Speaking, speaking, I mean, I can I can sort of get by where I am now. I'm at the place where I can understand practically everything, but I can't say it myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can say a few things here and there. I know how to order food. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the yeah. most valuable thing right there. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah um yeah, so uh i don't know when if when you're planning on coming back to america for your next visit but um you know the last time i got to interview you when i had a radio show i uh i know at the end of it you mentioned you were working on a rock project with some friends mm -hmm. and if i had to guess um i'm guessing that what you were talking about was silver kid uh yeah. your your new uh band that just yeah. released an ep recently i was listening yeah. i uh loved it loved the Thank music you, i'm not big rock guy but really fresh fresh sound uh yeah very unique rock sound with your bass lines underneath yeah. um, and uh i was wondering you know how that came together and where you see that going um honestly man it was a one of those random things that just happens in life that you can't explain too well my buddy Fuyu, who's the phenomenal drummer here in Japan, he's like the the man here. He uh we had kind of known of each other but never spoke. So he hit me up in 2021 and was like, yo, uh, let's go, let's go get some food, man, or whatever. So he took me to this Shabu Shabu restaurant. All oh, you can eat Shabu Shabu, by the way, which changed my life forever. It's, <laughs> I'll eat that place. I'll eat that place out of business. But anyway. <laughs> is that different than the Golden Corral here? <laughs> oh, <it's... laughs> I don't even know what shabu shabu is. <laughs> Sh shabu shabu is like hot pot. So that you basically oh. got a, a broth and you throw, you know, if if you're vegetarian, you just eat a bunch of vegetables and they just bring it to you. If you eat meat, they bring you all kind of meat. You throw it in there and. You just eat it nonstop, and it's it's like the the cleanest way to eat food because you're oh. most of the time it's just like water with seaweed inside. You know what I'm saying? So you're just boiling everything, right? But uh, it's really good. But he took me to this place, and we were you know just talking about different stuff, and it's like, man, you know, I hope we can play together one day. And then he was like, man, you know, have you ever been a part of a band like a rock band and i was like well i was a member of suicidal tendencies for like two shows <laughs> i know? didn't know that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah suicidal tendencies and infectious grooves for like two shows i played on one album the family the family album that came out a few years ago but other than that no band like i've just always played with other people you know 
he was like, me neither, man. Like I've always wanted to do that. So he was like, would you be down and do something like that? If I, if I got something started, I just looked at him and I was like, eh, why not? I mean, you know, I've experienced all this other stuff, but never done that. So, uh, yeah, he, I ended up having to go back to LA and then he hit me and was like, yeah. So I met up with this guitar player and then met up meeting up with this singer they were sending me stuff while I was still in LA. We were recording like our single, the cloud nine. I literally recorded that back in LA and they were all here in the studio. So, so it's a crazy story how it all happened, man. But as far as where I see it going, all I can say is I've never really been a part of anything that moved this fast. Um, the, the, the fans in Japan, I know this from the experience of touring with other artists out here that the fans here are extremely supportive. And it's, it's, it's not like America where, you know, you gotta be Beyonce in order for people to pay attention to you. You know what I mean? Like that's a, again, that's a Western thing out here. They look at it. Like if you wake up one morning and be like, I'm going to start, a, uh, I'm going to open a bakery immediately people are like oh wow you were courageous enough to open a bakery we'll support that's the way they are here and i think that's beautiful no matter what you do they just they're old-fashioned in the sense of you know they know the only way you can really make it is if 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 you are getting that support you know buying merchandise you know buying the music and even the physical music like all of that stuff is still a thing here right and uh, I've never been a part of anything that moved this fast. You know, we it's like the minute we announced that we were a band, people just came, you know, and like, it's just, it's just crazy, man. So it's, it's definitely moving quick. A lot of things in the works, but we just, I'm just going along for a ride really, you know. I love That's it. fascinating. Like, so you're saying culturally the support is there. So do you not have, like, so I'm sure there's press behind you when you're talking about when you're releasing things, but do you not have a paparazzi that's waiting to waiting for you to fail? That's following you around and, and, and waiting for the, you know, the, uh, the upskirt shot as you get out of the limo, that's not happening. They don't now? do it. They don't do it, man. It's, it's wow. so, it's the biggest, like traveling around with Snoop. I mean, you can imagine like Snoop everywhere we went, the police were trying to provoke him everywhere. We went, people were trying to like, you know, just do like what what can I catch him doing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody I've ever worked with back home, pretty much. Uh, especially the rappers. I mean, of course, you know, it's it comes with the territory. You're a gangster rapper, like, you know, people are gonna be assuming you're into some mischief. But here, it's like they, Even after he did the cooking show with Martha Stewart, they're still Oh man. <laughs> oh man, people still be following this cat, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's a pretty far dude. removed. He's pretty he's far a... removed from the the whole the persona yeah. that that was three decades ago. I would think. He, anyway, he's a lovable guy, but every now and then you got somebody that is trying to bring you down. You know, and uh, that stuff though here, nah, man. Like if if you start, they're like they don't want you to ever quit after you start. You know wow. what I'm saying? And it's 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 beautiful, man. But that's the reason why a lot of these artists here, you know, many of them aren't known outside of Japan, but they're able to do what they want and follow their dreams in their home. It's rare to have support in your home, in your backyard. You know, that's very, very rare, man. So that sounds yeah. like a like a dream. I mean, I, it's again, I'm not yeah. surprised. It sounds like uh, a beautiful culture. And yeah. Uh, I mean, I is with your solo work. Are you able mm -hmm. to market yourself over there in the same way? Where you oh, they kind of getting? It. Yeah, okay. I'm not. I'm, I'm not oh. surprised. I would have guessed that. Man. Um, I don't know if like you know how it compares like U.S. versus Japan, but it's I I um, imagine um, it's going over well. I mean, this since day one, since I released my first album ever, they they were on it. I was able to see that people in Japan. I mean, you know, and they know I'm so into the culture and stuff like that too. So there's, 
they 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 understand how much I respect this place. And it's like they want to show me, well, we respect you too. Thank you for loving us and our culture type of thing. You know, people in, in the States are supportive as well, but it's 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 a little different. It's just it's just different there. Like, you know, we we come from a place where so many people will overlook you if you don't have a certain bloodline or depending on it's depending on what you've done already like your resume and stuff like that instead of just respecting somebody for being great at what they do you know what i'm saying yeah. like we america is a, is a different society man like we're one of the only places where you could be a horrible person but if you got money it's like everybody sweeps all the horrible stuff you do under the rug right but then, you know, you could be so great and so talented, so gifted at something, but you're just starting out and people are like, no, I, I got to wait to see when he has this or does this or she can do this. I'm going to determine their worth based off of that. You know what I'm saying? And and that's like non-existent here. You, you get a few people here and there because the music industry is snakes everywhere. But for the most part, just the general people here are it's just night and day man i mean i i'm just even saying it to y'all right now i'm thinking about it like i ain't never seen nothing like this in all my years of being in this game never. well i know i've heard you say in other interviews that when you first uh tried to break into the la scene there was a lot mm -hmm. of a lot of that like preconceived notion oh, about man. your playing and people assuming oh. you play a certain way and, and kind of oh. prejudging your professional style a little bit and it oh, almost sounds man. like that's like a, just a bigger cultural version of that yeah i mean they first off they people wasn't trying to fool with me simply because i'm a nerd you know, this, <laughs> this, this is before i thought it was just because you you had all the chops <laughs> it was it was it was yeah the chops it was he's not from here he listens to rock music he listens to country music like they deem that as being whack but it was also, this is before Marvel was cool. You know, this is before anime was everything. You know, this is before Star Wars was like, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah, and yeah. granted, it's always been like pockets of, 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 of a fan base for all of this stuff. But I mean, me and Dan Tobias, uh, Mike Tobias' son, we talk about it all the time, how we got bagged on at school for watching anime. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like if you don't watch anime, you're weird. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? If if you've never seen a Marvel movie, you're weird. If you never uh, you know, if you don't know who Mace Windu is, you're weird. If you don't know who Yoda is, you're weird, you know. So it was just a different time. And playing chords on the bass and knowing how to play Indian music and knowing how to play Turkish music. That was like, what's the point of knowing all that stuff? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, cause I want to, you know? Yeah. It was weird, man. It was wild. Yeah. Well, um, speaking of, uh, Dan Tobias, mm -hmm. um, pretty Toby, sure right? Mike, Mike Tobias lives right near you, Matt, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Dan, Dan's, I mean, his nickname's Toby, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. Him. I had him, and I was I was a teacher at a school for a minute, and wow. when when he was at uh, Poughkeepsie Day School, yes. In uh, I taught there from uh, two thousand and one to two thousand and five. Wow. And I know Mike to buy. I've been to the shop. I played some of his guitars, and I saw a video of you. Uh, looked like it was at Nam when you were talking about um the the I can't I don't remember the the name of the, the there was a japanese uh, word that means nerd you were saying oh, otaku otaku yeah 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 yeah, yeah. uh but it, we, we, i'm just curious when that so you play that bass that's that's a your a signature bass that was made for you yeah, yeah very that's cool. one of my signatures yeah so you when you were in was there another man there there named charlie nicely who was at the booth charlie man yeah, yeah. so uh, charlie i've before, since I was wow. born, Charlie was in my life, man. And my father was a wow. professional musician, and uh, him and Charlie played together with Ed Summerlin for decades. I grew up with I'm, Charlie. Lives uh, like wow. seven miles from me. Small dog on world, man. Yeah, man. Wow. Okay. 
Yeah, those bases are. I mean, uh, Michael's a, a st- astoundingly brilliant it's incredible what he's able to create he's amazing man i mean i you know i i respect every luthier i respect every base company every builder all over the world you know and i and i it's all art for everybody but there's a reason why i only own mtd bases. that's literally all i have is i i got two guitars and they're mtd guitar i don't even play guitar (laughs) but i got them though you know like i i have so much respect for mike and dan is like my brother you know like this dude i'm surprised i haven't got a text from him right now like he'll just i didn't know that wow about anime like we don't even talk about bass (laughs) we don't we don't even (laughs) talk about bass we talk about anime and food and the puppy that he just got like you know what i'm saying he just got married yeah we it's like a real relationship yeah wow amazing yeah i mean the last time i saw him he was in high school Mm, so uh it it, like i i literally haven't uh i don't even know where he's living now he's i mean he's not far from from his pop's crib okay that far Like, like i went out there and crashed at his place a few years back while i was on the road uh, he got this, this seemed like it was maybe like just 10 minutes away. I know we went across that frightening bridge. The well, which one? Bridge or, I know it's a bunch of them. It was just this scary bridge. And we <laughs> okay. saw a couple of black bears. Oh, yeah. yeah. We Next thing you know, we were at his place. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Somewhere up there. Yeah, I think that, I mean, I it's generally he's in that woodstock his dad's in that woodstock area there's a believe it or not there's a lot of incredible luthiers living in that oh in that small tell area me about it. yeah when i was there a few years back man crazy sadowski he just rolled up in mike's he just walked in the shop yeah most most surreal thing i ever seen because i mean he's highly respected as well he literally brought one of his bases for mike to look at uh-huh Right, a Sadowski base, and Mike had his base, and then he asked Mike, "What are you doing today?" And Mike said, "Oh, we're sanding this." So he, Sadowski goes and starts sanding an MTD. Uh huh. And I was just like, "This is like John Williams and Hans Zimmer like helping each other with <laughs> film school." You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like this yeah. is. I, like and me and my homie Dave Prasad were were in the shop and we were watching this, and I I tapped Dave and Dave was just like I know and I said Dave I feel like crying right now looking at like like this is like two masters that are so well respected and geniuses right yeah. and and there's absolute genuineness and friendship between the two. That's yeah, freaking beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Yeah, we're gonna have. Uh, there's a. I don't know if you met another man up there by the name of Woody Pfeiffer. Mm-hmm. Oh, so mm-hmm. Woody's also a brilliant luthier, and we're gonna have yep. him on the podcast pretty soon. Actually, amazing so, man. Amazing. Yeah, all those. And when I'm ever at his house or we're at any of the the luthier shows, you get to hang out and talk with all these different. And they're Legends. just dudes. They're just hanging, you know. And they're it, just chilling, man. Yeah. yeah, they they respect each other, like you know, Zon. The same thing, like. Yeah. the zon family the tobias family it's just it's dope that's so dope to me it's so dope man it's a different group of nerds you talk yeah, until right. the wee hours about fret wire and uh yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then another another guy in that mix is certainly ken parker but i don't think ken makes bases mm. you know uh and we've oh, talked yeah. the wee hours about uh sanding and all of those i'm fascinated by it so i could sit and listen to those guys right, talk man. at uh me at, too to the wee hours it's yeah. rocket science to me but i love to listen i just like to listen to it like i set up and listen to mike tobias and or no it was dan tobias and john smith ken smith's son so i'm sitting up there like wow john smith and daniel tobias they're standing here and they're they're talking about like wood and then they ventured off just talking about regular stuff like you're they're human but it's just yeah. it's so dope this is acts of human kindness man i love that junk I and love then it. they all just stop as soon as you start playing their instrument and then they're they're listening <laughs> away and that's like un, you know really checking it out and, and asking you for your feed it's really amazing it's a different it's a it's a creative force but it's a different wavelength that it, it's yeah. fascinating to see and yeah Absolutely. Are you guys going to Nam show this year? I've never been. 
Probably not. I, no I, don't, I don't got money to travel out there right now. Man, none of us do, brother. I mean, <laughs> not, not with these doggone after COVID prices. Nobody does. But yeah, it would be nice, man, if you could get there just to just to tap in on the vibe, man. It's Nam is special, man. It's special. I would All love to go. Musicians and and companies and stuff like that. Everybody just chilling. It's it's dope. Like I don't even. I don't even care to play. I don't care about playing. I want to go and eat. That's what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I want to eat. I want my homies from Australia and Canada to bring peanuts and peanut butter so we could sit down and just eat that junk and drink water. You know what I'm oh, saying? So you're not traveling around the the lush Anaheim environment looking for anything to eat outside <laughs> of Disney then. I get it. Yeah, because there ain't. No, no. <laughs> There's nothing there, man. <laughs> it ain't nothing. If you want to get if you want to get dope food in LA, man, you got to go to Koreatown. You got to go to Little Tokyo. Like, and uh, I mean, you can get dope food in the hood, but it's the hood. You got you got to watch out. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. I, I can show you some fire fried chicken spots, but you, you gotta be careful. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I just want to apologize quick. I hope you guys can't hear purring in the microphone. My cat won't leave me alone. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've seen him put this is up. our first time doing Zoom. Matt is doing this, of course, from the studio. I'm doing it from the studio apartment. Yeah, <laughs> so I, don't, I don't have the most professional setup here, but you hopefully this will endear some extra. Oh, <laughs> no, you're good, man. I've just seen the, head, the cat's head creep up in the screen like... <laughs> Yeah, I have nowhere to. It's I have nowhere else to get them. Up. So as long as they're not knocking oh, over my upright, I'm happy. <laughs> nah, you good, man. You straight. I'm I'm downstairs right now. My wife, my daughter, my daughter's probably upstairs snoring. You good? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Good. Well. Uh. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully I can make it to Nam sometime. Hopefully I can make it to the the food version of Nam. I assume you'd call yeah, it man. Nam. Oh yeah. Um. Nam. Yeah, man. <laughs> Oh yeah. Nom nom nom. Um yes. but <laughs> yes. Um la but in our last interview uh we had a great discussion about your synesthesia mm. um which was endlessly fascinating. Mm. So I I had some kind of follow up questions mm. I wanted to to delve into yeah. um to kind of expand upon that a little bit. Um so I assume you have perfect pitch. Yeah. Uh, um and when you're so so you hear music you know when you, you mm. you've told me you hear music when you eat or ba you know oh, just based yeah. off your other senses in general it's creating music for you in your head and d um does that music generally follow conventional harmony or like or is it like uh, is it western harmony that's just flowing to your head or does it is it outside of harmony that i mean think of because because i've been fortunate to expose myself to uh, to music outside of western music it can be anything at this point you know what i'm saying like i'll like right now the heater is freezing in tokyo right now so the heater is on and it's humming in b the most dominant note is b right but i don't and i'm sure you guys can't hear that but no. it's it's, mm, it's it's just humming and it's like mm, 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 like that listening to this the first thing i think of is like carnatic music you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying like south indian classical carnatic music <laughs> like i'm hearing all these things that would sound dope over that not western at all you know okay. what i'm saying it's just straight up like 1930 India, you know, or like when people from Punjab were migrating to Pakistan, which used to be part of it, but now they kind of, they broke off to their own thing. But that's, I I hear different things all the time. And I just, I'm at a place where I don't even, I don't question the weirdness of it. I just let it do what it does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm for sure, hundred percent. I'm always listening to everything and everything is music to me. Everything, you know, you could clap. Of course, I'm going to think about rhythm or a polyrhythm, or I'll be trying to listen into what the note of your clap is. This is super nerd music stuff that, 
I was very uncomfortable. I probably told you that I was really uncomfortable sharing that stuff when I was a kid Mm because I didn't want nobody thinking I was a psychopath. You know what I'm saying? Like, he says he can see music. Like, (laughs) (laughs) you know what I'm saying? He's a weirdo. Stay sounds, like a, <laughs> sounds like a new Marvel character, definitely. <laughs> there, there actually is a character, like I can't remember his name, but there is a character that that uh he that is part of his his powers. He can like shoot music. It's really weird, like musical notes. He was a, a gag character, but anyway. Start whooping uh, people's asses with Charlie yeah, with, confirmation with, with notes with licks exactly with with harmonies and stuff. That's what he does though. He literally will like shoot harmony, try to melody <laughs> exactly <laughs> melodic minor, you know, <laughs> uh, augmented. You know what I'm saying? Like, double dude diminished. Races. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm double diminished. But, uh, <laughs> but like, yeah, man, it, it it's something that I I kind of kept under wraps growing up because I didn't quite understand what it was either. I just knew I always heard music and I could see things, you know, like certain, certain material, clothing material and stuff like that. It would sound like something to me, you know, certain things that I would eat would sound like something. This is super weird stuff, but now it's like, I don't care. Like, I ain't trying to, I ain't about to kill nobody. I'm not a nutcase. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, <laughs> just yeah, you know, it's just music. Yeah, yeah. I just wasn't sure if if the the music you're getting from the food is informed by the music you've heard. You know what I mean? Like you say like, yeah. if like after you've learned about Indian music, does that change how you how you hear stuff? Because now like your brain has a new angle to take those those. I'll, I'll put it to you like this. Some like for example, eating certain things. Sometimes I'll eat something and it will immediately spark a song that I may have heard before, right? Or a section of a song, maybe a chord progression. It'll spark that. Then other times it'd be something just totally new to me. And I'll be like, wow, what is that? And then I'll turn it into a song and it becomes a song that I probably put on my records you know what i'm saying like literally it's 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 just different every time it depends some things i can like i tell people all the time my favorite color is like teal teal and turquoise and like uh the color evergreen like everything in between that like that almost uh, I don't know if you guys remember Spike from Ninja Turtles. He was the one turtle. He was a snapping turtle that got transformed, but he was green, but it was like this bluish green color. Okay, you remember the Game Boy colors? Yeah, back in the I day? never had a Game Boy. I, the I teal, always played the teal other people's one. on the bus. <laughs> yeah, me too. I did too until <laughs> my mom and dad finally got me one. But that teal one, for some reason, that has always been my favorite color and for some reason most of the time when i see that color it's automatically a flat for some reason wow Mm, it's just always a flat right and it's been like that since before i even knew music like music for some reason when i would look at it i would just hear "Mm," in my head you know what i'm saying then later on, I learned, okay, so this is A flat. And still, even when I hear it, only not every instrument, but the frequency from certain instruments, it's going to be teal for some reason. You know, like, but I don't know, man. It's 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 like I'm diving in like super nerdy on this kind of stuff, but it's, there's so many variables to this thing. And anybody, I say it all the time, anybody could have it. You just, it's really just imagination. Yeah. You know, if if you sit and look at a painting long enough, just by yourself, and then you stare at this painting long enough, eventually it, it you may hear something. You might hear a song. You might hear a, I don't know, a groove or anything. It, it's, anybody can have synesthesia. Well, Some people s- are just worse than others, I guess. I don't see color when I hear mm-hmm. things, but I, I. F- I feel Sounds it pretty woke, as a color. I'm sorry, what? Sounds pretty woke. 
Yeah, Bubby, I don't see color like <laughs> <Whoa>, you. <laughs> woke culture. Woke culture. God damn it. Can't escape woke it. culture. I'm canceling everybody that does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, I don't see color. But I don't like, see color. <laughs> but I, 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 but like, I think of harmony when I hear notes. Yeah. It's, it's a color. Yeah. Like you're, you're, you're creating a, a picture in sound. Right. So right. I, you know, I, I can see how the body could do that, but I can't. My body cannot. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and and there's different, there's different, um, not ways, but like there's or not levels rather. There's different ways that people experience synesthesia like you ever okay you ever listen to a certain song and it made you feel it made you feel bad or feel good or feel like something that's that's part of synesthesia like you ever ate something or just smell something and it made you feel something you know nostalgic or anything that's like triggers a memory yeah yeah it's it it even that is like a different form of synesthesia. So everybody technically experiences it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody does. I believe everybody does. It's interesting. I just I have two I have two questions about that. But one is just a statement, which is for years I would see this certain color, this mm -hmm. Crayola blue color on these cars. And I forget which we which Audi makes one uh anyway mm. it's a certain color and every time I saw it I would get excited and then just yeah. recently like the last couple of weeks I realized why it's exactly mm. the same color as my first electric guitar oh. and it remind I'm not kidding Sparks though because I was I was like 13 when I bought it I had like a yeah. little side job and saved mm. up enough money and bought it and I remember that it, br it was bringing back that exact feeling but yeah. I didn't understand where it was coming from I don't think that's maybe that is what you're not talking about I don't hear me, any melody. <laughs> the the way I see it, I, it, that's just a like a a branch, like a branch from what my type of synesthesia is. And I'm in like guys. I'll tell y'all this. Like I've talked to people. There was a guy that did a lesson with me some years ago, and I I think he was in New Zealand. <clears throat> Could have been in Australia. He was down there, definitely down there, but. When he when he got on the 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 Skype call, everything was just kind of dark and I could barely see him. He had like long red hair and it was just kind of dark. And I was like, what's up, man? And he said, man, you know, honestly, I didn't want you can show me some stuff on base. But what I needed to talk to you about is synesthesia. And he told me he barely can leave the house. He wow. said he said and he everything in his room was like brown even his blanket and every he was sitting on his bed and it was like brown and like dark yellow copperish looking right and he said i can barely leave the house like i have to prepare myself every day because when he goes outside all the sound just drives him nuts and and he sees all this different stuff and he can't take it right and uh I had never heard of that before. I was like, wow, man. Like, cause me, I've, I've been the type where I just kind of just let it do what it does. And it doesn't like, it doesn't plague my life. You know, I could shut it off if I want to, you know, oh. I could literally just focus in on something else. Like if it, you know, I, I do have a little bit of ADHD. Like my wife would be talking to me and I'll be listening to she's talking in C sharp. Okay. And she, you know, like I'll do that, but I won't say nothing because I don't want to get crucified. <laughs> Are you transcribing <laughs> what I'm saying right now? <laughs> Are you transcribing me? How dare you predict my intervals? You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. <laughs> but, but like there's people out here that really deal with that. It was a kid I, I met at NAM show a few years ago. His father wrote me and was like, you know, my son has synesthesia. He's 15. I'm going to bring him to NAM show. You know, he struggles with it every day at school. I kid y'all not, man. This dude came up to me. Nice kid too, man. He was really tall. And I was like, what's going on, man? I shook his hand and he was just looking around. I was like, you okay? And he was like, I'm cool. And I was like, listen, man, I said, just breathe, man. And I said, all of this stuff is getting to you. And he said, I'm not going to lie. It is. And I said, you just let it do what it does. I said, don't fight it. 
you know, he said, I'm seeing so much stuff. I said, I get it. I trust me. I know, but it's cool. It's all good. Just, and I saw him the next few days in Nam show and he was like, I'm okay now. And I said, yeah, man, like, you know, it, it ain't nothing wrong with you. You just, your imagination is gone. I said, go home and turn this junk into a song. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Turn it into a song. I now, I have a tradition at Nam show since I've been going back in 2003. Dang, man, 20 years. It'd be 20 years this year. But I, as soon as I walk through that main entrance, I just stand there for like 10 to 15 minutes and I close my eyes and I just, I listen to all the chaos, right? I love it. I love being surrounded by music. And then I walk straight to Mike Tobias's and I bring, they be liking the pork rinds. I bring the pork rinds and peanuts and we sit there and eat, you know, it's, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. I, I did. Uh, I was, I had, a, a, Brad, I, I just have one follow-up with hey, that. Man. I just was curious mm-hmm. when you were talking about growing up and, feeling it sounds like you were afraid to show who you were as far as uh well to use your words to being nerdy you did yeah there, there wasn't a lot of cred in being nerdy i guess or, or ah, you, were, you was you was whack something happened go ahead brad and i'll fix what's going on on my end oh, um okay well another one of the uh the uh questions i wanted to ask uh about synesthesia you know mm. i'm a big fan of of uh hip-hop especially a lot of old school hip-hop oh yeah and a lot of those production techniques that's when it was real uh, involve yeah. <laughs> detuning songs the, yep. the songs that are not in uh you know a440 mm-hmm. um does that sometimes create a more beautiful color with the sample or does does it usually like muddy it up a little bit it it can actually it that was one of my favorite things about playing with Snoop, um, because a lot of those like classic Dr. Dre records they were off by like you know forty cent, yeah, you yeah. know forty five, forty six cent and stuff like that, and but. Instead of me at like some of the songs I in the beginning, I would tune to whatever it was. And I thought about it. I said, wait a minute. This actually may sound nice if I if I stay close to 440 and that stays, you know, at four, you know, 70 something or whatever. And I and I realized like this might actually sound cool. So I, I got to the point where I stayed tuning standard for most of the time. So those two frequencies could kind of like do this, you know what I'm saying? Like hmm. hearing a hearing a regular 440A, but then hearing a like a a Turkish music A, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I don't know it, anything about Turkish A's. <laughs> it b- basically like uh, so like sharp basically okay. just really sharp <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, yeah, yeah. really really sharp really really sharp is especially if you're if you're talking like 1980s to like 88 turkish music popular music over there like super sharp but i began to really enjoy that and then the few times that i got a chance to like do stuff with rizza or like Mad Man, uh, Red Man and Method Man, like you know the OGs, man. Didn't like, know you worked with them. That's oh man. Any anybody? Nothing redder. Some of my favorites. <laughs> yes, same here. Wu Tang is oh my probably God. the greatest. I mean, you know, Wu Tang forever for the children. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but like, yeah, that stuff and and working with pretty much any of Snoop's homies from back in the day if if they're a homie of his i got a chance to work with all of them from e40 too short ice cube i mean you name it like all common tali quali dmx hate to say it but r kelly (laughs) (laughs) even his nasty tail but yeah like that old school did you see yellow when you when you heard him (laughs) Oh, man. <laughs> actually i think i saw brown i think i saw, <laughs> I think oh, I saw brown like, oh. brown and black but uh <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> he's disgusting, but yeah, yeah man. sorry about that. It, no, 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 it's a, that's freaking hilarious because, yeah, that's it's not one I'm proud of, man. But we didn't know back then. We didn't. We didn't really know. But yeah, it does. It does change the colors sometimes. You know. Okay. Those uh, little yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um. Do uh. A lot of people say that four thirty-two, uh, tuning your A to four hundred thirty-two hertz is cool. What What do you think mm. of that? Someone who who actually has a deeper opinion about this? It's stuff. preference, man. Yeah, it's preference. I mean, because I mean, it. it, it here's the thing. There's this new thing out now where every like this this new generation is into like chakra and all this kind of stuff so they're <laughs> saying the the mind is c and it's yellow and people like me are like no <laughs> c, c is not yellow for everybody you know what i'm saying yeah. and when i think about my mind i don't hear c either like that's but they're like the the heart is violet <laughs> and it's you know g and it's like no the heart is not g to me like y'all are just who came up with this you know what i'm saying e is like, the saddest key yeah <laughs> like, like what yeah. are you talking about and like yeah. no e is actually very joyful to me honestly it's very mm. relaxing to me it's different for everybody you know E for me right now, if I just if I think of a, a open E specifically open E on one of my bases specifically, it's red. Hmm. It's red. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to say, oh, so because E is red, then that means E flat would be orange because on the colored, the color <laughs> decks, it's like, no, that. E flat is like E flat is like pinkish right now. You see what I'm saying? So the the whole pitch thing, the sense stuff, like I get it. Four thirty two. It depends to me. It yeah. depends. But whatever people feel, hey man, if it if you feel like it sounds cooler, yeah, then great. That that's how you feel. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. for me. Like, you know, what's so random guys out here. I still don't understand why, but out here they tune to 441. Why the one cent? I have no idea. I literally, and nobody can honestly tell the difference, right? Yeah. Like, that's way, it's way too close. Like, you, and first off, you can't even tell on a stringed instrument because our, string instruments are going to be off regardless like if you listen to 440 on a piano and then 441 the the difference is like practically non-existent you really have to be zoned in to even hear the the how the this is the nerd stuff how the color of it is like morphing a little bit it's it's very practically impossible I don't know why they do that though, but then you go to India and it's like 480. <laughs> you oh. go you go to uh Bangladesh, it's like 9,000 Vegeta <laughs> and Goku. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just it's just different, man. Everybody, it just depends on what you want. It so it sounds like it's all vibration to you. And you don't you like so you don't think of the temperate system as being tyrannical in any way. It's just it's all vibration. It's that's it. And it's just it depends on how it looks to me. Like you can see you can see the note and the frequency if if you're zoning in on it. You know, like I you could play an open E on that guitar back there and you know, people with so synesthesia, they literally can it almost looks like when you're recording and you know how when you're recording you can see the like the, the yeah. frequency. Mm -hmm. It it almost looks like that. You know what I'm saying? You can see it. So My when you brother, see Brad's mm -hmm. Brad's hair, 
when you see yeah. that ginger kind of thing, what do you get a certain, is it an evil kind of? <laughs> <laughs> or... <laughs> Don't be scared, uh... buddy. Don't be scared. Just a ginger. Be honest. <laughs> I think of Carrot Top, man. <laughs> hey, that dude is a legend, man. Yeah, I'm, honored. Right. I'm honored. He's a freaking legend, man. That dude is a legend. Yeah, Brad needs some props. <laughs> you, you can't give me some props, Matt? <laughs> watermelon and a sledgehammer. and <laughs> oh, Rest in peace, Gallagher. Gallagher. Yeah, that's... that's... Rub- a rubber duck, yeah. <laughs> Get you some props, man. Classic comedy props. <laughs> yeah, man. I um, did have a question, though, Brad. I'm sorry. I I did have a okay, question earlier, and then I, I got my mm. mic kind of malfunction. But uh, I had two questions actually. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But when you talk about it, sort it sort of seems like as a kid, uh, you were self censoring in a way where you didn't want you didn't want to reveal to i don't know if so i'm wondering does that come from was that something you just felt internally on your own or were you is it a cultural thing was it something that you're that you where did that come from and i'm wondering if it has to do with being in america or if it's just the way you were as a child i mean i mean it it was Honestly, it was like this. It's it was the equivalent of if you mention your interest to somebody and they're not interested, then you're just like, oh, well, there's no point in me talking about it. You know what I'm saying? It it was kind of like that. And I mean, granted, yeah, back in the day, the only black kids at the school that was watching anime and reading comic books, it was just a few of us, you know, like all the other black kids was just like, man, I'm trying to get some chicks, you know. And I was trying to get some chicks too, you know, I ain't gonna lie, but it was like, I'm trying to get some chicks, but like, hey, do you want to read Iron Man? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was like, and like my cousin, funny man, my cousin Tim, he used to like, anytime they would, I was the square, right? So I was the guy that didn't drink and stuff like that. So anytime my cousins would have parties, they would tell me about it. And I would kind of be like the one looking after everybody. And my cousin Tim would be like, man, Bubby, man, don't come over here talking about Dragon Ball Z, though, man. Like, you're going to run all the girl, man. And then my other cousin would be like, man, chill out, man. He ain't going, he ain't going, man. Man, no, nah, man, he be, run, he be running all the baddies away, man. He be running all the hotties away, talking about Goku and all this kind of stuff. Like, <laughs> it used to be hilarious, man. But that was me you know what i'm saying so i was that guy like yeah i I want to holler at this girl but hey so what do you think about harry potter you know what i'm saying like that was me you know yeah. <laughs> expelliarmus <you know? laughs> <laughs> <laughs> expect over expect over patronum babe you know what i'm saying like yeah. i was i was that guy i was that guy and i'm still that guy for sure that's beautiful <laughs> um yeah, yeah sorry if you guys just heard a door opening noise my uh my oh, brother tom shout out to my brother tom moving my car he lives upstairs oh. i parked my car on the wrong side of the street he's saving oh, he me from getting you. a ticket shout I'm out to tom ticket, trash day is it trash day <laughs> yep is it trash or no day? no no it's street sweeping street sweeping yeah yep like hey, i said professional operation here the studio apartment <laughs> Yeah, that's gay, brother. You you running it, man. It's a well oiled machine. It's it's proper, man. I have no complaints. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, okay. Last question about synesthesia, and then yeah, yeah. we're gonna hit some other stuff quick because okay. you get to bed because I mean I know it's getting oh, late. Um, you good, man. I'm up. Does uh, <laughs> so if you eat a poorly made meal, is that a bad <laughs> song, or do you eat do you eat some shitty food that turns out to be a jam? Yeah, I've experienced <laughs> literally both. I've I've had some horrible food and it made me think of the worst possible stuff and I've smelled some food and it made me think of the worst possible stuff and vice versa. I've tried some things I wasn't sure how it was going to taste. Like for example, I remember the first time I'm in Japan and they gave me some horse meat. Good god. And I was like, what is this? Like, you know, I'm just thinking. Burger King, like, of course. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Wendy's, of course. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, oh, In-N-Out Burger. Yeah, All right, yeah. don't talk bad about right. the ginger fast food restaurant. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> 
<laughs> dude so so we're at this restaurant and i'm like oh this is, looks like a, a slab of raw beef and they were like no we call it basashi and i was like what is basashi and they said horse horse and i was like uh, nay. So yeah, nay. <laughs> my wife was just kind of looking at it and they was like, just try, 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 or whatever. So I tried it. And I was like, wow, this is fire. It was raw. It was raw. Fire. Fire. And yeah, I, I probably thought of a tune or a lick or something like that came a chord of nice chord or something. That definitely happens though. I kid you not. It, you know what's funny? My favorite food. Peanut butter. I'll <laughs> take it. I'll take it. If you if you give me a three hundred dollar Wagyu steak, Miyazaki steak at that, I'm still gonna want to finish the meal with some peanut butter. Like even my cheat days, when I do my cheat days and stuff, I'll eat all this other stuff. But the finale is <laughs> always peanut butter. It makes me think of something. It just it mm -hmm. it brings me like some joy. I don't really know why. I, I, I probably get that from my dad. My dad loved peanut butter, but it's just the best food ever. Like I'll eat it. I was dipping Cheetos in the peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I promise you, I that. never smoked weed. I promise you, I never smoked weed. But I definitely was dipping <laughs> the Cheetos in it's barbecue Cheetos. I dipped it in the peanut butter, man, and ah, it was good. You're an innovator in music and the culinary arts. Yes, it's, it's fire. It's amazing. Man. I, I can help you get fat. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite brand of peanut butter? Uh. Do you have an endorsement? Are you endorsed by Jeff? I wish I, <laughs> dude, you know what? I wish so bad that I had some like a peanut sponsorship or a peanut butter sponsorship. I do. I would promote that junk. Well, what's the brand? Day. Promote them right now. What's the brand you want? <clears throat> Craft peanut butter. If I'm talking about like Canada, the the best peanut butter that is known at least at least the brand craft is craft peanut butter it's only in canada though i mean i think you can get it on amazon now but only the red top which is crunchy the green top which is smooth but my favorite peanut butter of all time uh out here in japan every prefecture has their own local peanut butter and all of them are stupid wow. every last one like Dude, I was in Gunma, which is like this super country, tiny city that's north of Tokyo. And me and my boy Bam was at the train station, went to this market, man, this little tiny market, and they had strawberry peanut butter. So it was dehydrated chunks of strawberry inside the peanut butter. I've never had anything like that in my life. Like, I st still to this day, like, I don't even know who thought of that. You you know the kind we got back at the crib that's like the swirled grape one. Yeah. Not, nah, that's some bull crap. This junk <laughs> was literal chunks of strawberry in the peanut butter, but the peanut butter was also like pink. Hmm. Dude, I teared up when I bit into that. Yeah, joke, you look man. emotional, man. <laughs> I am. You know why I'm emotional? Because that was way back in 2016, and I have yet to find it again. Oh, well, listeners, find it for him. Can't Get him a sponsorship. <laughs> If y'all can go to Goonma, and I was just in Goonma, but I couldn't get to that station. Strawberry peanut butter, man. Strawberry. I never heard of it. It's I I do when you said the swirl, I remember seeing that. I never owned, I never bought that stuff with the grape, the Welch's, right? That was like a yeah, I never yeah. had that. The jar was about this big. It was tiny. It was a tiny oh. little glass jar, and it was super skinny, like this. Like you literally could just only fit a spoon in there. And and you get like what did I have? Like maybe three or four big spoonfuls of it, and it was gone. And the the I remember the junk cost like nine dollars. Damn, it's like not. But that man, I paid ninety dollars for that junk, man. It's fire. <laughs> the pinnacle of peanut butter. Good yeah, to know. Man. Heck yeah. uh -oh. <laughs> so okay, now all right, we've 
talked a lot about the food. We talked a lot about yeah, the synesthesia, all the yeah. great stuff. Um, yeah. But uh, okay, well, here's another thing I was I was curious about. I saw mm. on your website uh, it mm. said you've gotten a chance to work with Stevie Wonder, but in yep. the podcast last <clears throat> few years, I haven't heard the story, the context yeah, yeah. of that. Um, mm. uh, can you tell me, uh, you know, how that came to be and what your experience was, was with with him? Um, so it was, I think <clears throat> it was the end of November. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no. End of November. And my buddy Eddie called me. He was playing keyboards. Eddie Brown, he was playing keyboards with Stevie at the time. And Yohei was playing guitar. <clears throat> and he called me and said, Bubby, are you going to be in town around the 11th, I think it was, of December? And I was like, yeah, I'm not going nowhere. And there was this thing that they used to do every year, the Hollywood Hollywood Christmas Parade. The Hollywood Bowl Christmas Parade is always televised. And Eddie said, can you do this gig with Stevie? We just doing like two Christmas songs. <clears throat> and I was like, yeah, of course. So went to stevie studio in koreatown and we were rehearsing it was it was stevie wonder featuring richie sambora so i thought i was like wow that's pretty dope freaking richie sambora he's gonna have his shiny acoustic guitar and all this kind of stuff <clears throat> so he didn't come to rehearsal though he missed it but long story short so i'm plugging up my bass and and stevie sitting in the studio uh, in the mixing room where the SSL and stuff was and he comes out and it's just me, Eddie, Yohei and Rico was on drums. Rico plays drums or he played drums with uh, uh, what's his name? Kendrick Lamar. <clears throat> so Stevie just quietly sits down on the piano and starts playing Giant Steps. Right? And Classic Christmas tune. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, okay. And I had heard that he auditions musicians by like trying to see do they know certain standards and like if they can solo like totally different from what most people assume, you know, his pocket pays the bill. It's all about the groove. Like Stevie literally wanted to see if I could solo over Giant Steps, right? So he took a little solo. Then he told Eddie, take a solo. Eddie took a solo. And then he says, all right, now let's see what the bass player got like that. And I was just like, oh, you're in for it, buddy. Because I used to share this junk when I was a teenager <laughs> in my sleep, like at 500 BPMs, right? So I'm I'm soloing for a few bars in and I'm following the chord changes. He's like, okay, okay. So the bass player can follow chord changes. All right, all right, all right. And and he just started smiling. And I and I looked at him and I was like, this is pretty cool. Like Stevie yeah. Wonder. You know what I'm saying? Like, first <laughs> off, him, him play a song like that, solo over a song like that, but also his appreciation for all the aspects of music, not just, you know, let me see how funky you can be like that matters too, but let me see where your, your knowledge and your understanding of, of this type of music is, you know, and randomly to choose a song like, like he could have played one of his songs and told me solo over, but he picked this legendary song that is challenging for so many people. You know what I'm saying? But I recommend everybody take a take a whack at it because it's not that hard. It's just um you just gotta listen. I'll just say that. But mm. yeah, that experience with Stevie was dope. And Richie Sambor, when we was doing the gig, he got there. He didn't practice <laughs> what he was supposed to. <laughs> so so Stevie was kind of like going off on him a little bit. Um, and we did two songs. We did two songs, uh, uh, this Christmas, and then I, I was forgot hoping that would one. be one of them. <laughs> yeah, that definitely was one. You, yeah. Yeah, of course, and yeah, it was dope though, man. Hollywood Christmas parade thing. I think it's on YouTube. It I never heard Stevie sing that. He sings that. It's out. It's on YouTube. 
Yeah, it should be on YouTube. It oh, should I'll be go on find YouTube. that today. I would Hollywood Bowl, yeah. Hollywood Bowl Christmas Parade, Stevie Wonder, and and the year I believe was two thousand. It may have been two thousand fourteen, maybe. Okay. 2013 14 i could be off but if you just stevie wonder hollywood christmas parade and you'll you'll see it yeah okay definitely look for that yeah that's amazing very um, um, amazing story glad i yeah. asked because I, like I said i yeah. didn't, didn't find much about it in my uh research but uh weird experience once, once again legendary stuff um yeah you know um i'm a big fan of of hero dynasty your last album Thank and you, um i remember you saying you've you know that was a, a step towards just taking more of the work uh mm -hmm. into your own hands um yeah. and i don't know what role or you know how completely you handled the production and the, and the mixing and mastering of that and the the beats behind what's going on a um, lot but well, I, I figure a lot and honestly it's yeah. so some of the coolest unique most unique sounding funky parts um you. and you're you're a hell of a producer man do you ever you ever slide a beat over to snoop and be like <laughs> check this <laughs> like you or like anyone you know what i mean like you are you are such a funky producer with like such a cool unique sound are you are you interested at all in that side of things like uh, making beats for other artists i mean i i really this is no one knows about this but um i've actually tried in the past to submit music but you know it's it's one of those things where it, i really got a chance to witness the politics in it mm -hmm. you know i'm the i was the new guy and you know, I was super young when I was trying to, and it's just like, I was kind of getting the, well, you haven't paid your dues enough yet for us to listen type of thing. You know, not to, not to say that Snoop is that kind of guy, but it was just, you know, I tried a few times and Daz and Corrupt, like everybody, they love the stuff like Superfly, Battle Cat, they, all of them, they like, man, dude, you can really make some dope beats and this, this, that, and other. But it just after after a few experiences of not really getting the opportunity to even let people hear the stuff back then, I kind of was like, I'm I don't really have time for that no more. Cause that that can hurt your feelings a little bit. And then too, it's just like, you know, I'm sure y'all seen it. Like if if you weren't invited, don't go. If they didn't ask you then don't ask them yeah, type of thing it was yeah. kind of like that like if you don't if you don't want to hear my stuff then i don't want to beg you for it you know what i'm saying so but um recently like i i actually had made some stuff for lupe lupe fiasco is one of my favorite rappers of all time and one of my good friends like he's a nerd you know that's how me and him hit it off when I first started playing with him. Like, wait a minute, you like Street Fighter? And he was like, you like Street Fighter? And then you watch anime? You watch anime? Like, you know, it was like that. You like martial arts? You like martial arts? But I made him some stuff. Uh, and that was like one of the first times when somebody was like, man, like, I like this. I don't know when he's going to put the stuff out. Same thing with Janae Aiko. Made some stuff for her. and She loved it. Not sure when that's gonna come out either. I, I know she's gonna be dropping that stuff this year. Hopefully, loop. Hopefully, you put it out. Like, don't sit on it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you know, I've I've done some stuff for some different people. But one thing I I've learned that there's so much liberty and just if you can be brave enough to be an artist yourself, and if you if you can do it yourself, you can make it exactly how you want to your liking. You know what I'm saying? And I found a lot of joy in that, just stepping out there and making my own music for me. You know what I'm saying? Like even the stuff, the stuff with the Bubby and Eddie project that I'm doing, uh, the Pour Me a Drink song. Like I wrote that song randomly one night <clears throat> laughing about how much of a square me and Eddie are. You know, like we've never drank alcohol and we've been to all these industry parties and stuff like that. And, you know, 
I'll be sitting there drinking a hot green tea while everybody is like laid out on the ground, wasted. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm just like the square, just standing there with my pinky, like <laughs> hot tea. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I say cheerio. You know what I'm saying? But you know, like that, it's so fun to be able to just make something for you with no rules. You know, but yeah, I'm always down to collab with other artists if if they want to do so. I appreciate the heck out of Janae because I made something for her last year and sent it to her and she wrote me back and was like, this basically made me cry. And I was like, wow, thank you. You know, sent something to Lupe that I wanted him to rap on for my record. And he texts back like five minutes later, like, oh, I'm about to get on this tonight. And then come to find out, he was like, yeah, let me have that. So it's not going on my record no more. It didn't go on his, you know. But thank you, man. I'm, I appreciate you for for liking something I worked hard on. Thank you, you know. But even if you didn't, it's okay, you know. I'm not yeah. mad at you. Can't get mad at stuff like that. You can't concern yourself with it, you know. Yeah, I mean, like I, I was just, you know, <clears throat> it, I think it's, uh, like, the coolest when you take it to your own work. But I, you yeah. know, I wasn't sure how much you considered yourself – uh you know a producer outside of your work and how much interest oh, yeah. do you i don't know like do you have a particular producer who taught you a lot or like a particular favorite when it comes to what you listen to um i mean my my heroes as far as music production are probably you're probably going to be like i was not expecting that um john williams alan silvestri randy newman john powell han zimmer um Danny Elfman, um, Nobu Uematsu, Han, I already said mm -hmm. Han Zimmer, A.R. Raman. Um, notice I'm literally naming like all composers. Film score. Yeah. I heard you yeah, talk about score. a lot of these names and another. I was, I guess I wasn't expecting that for the answer of production, but I knew you were way into that. Because so. they do it. Because they do yeah. it too. It's just a lot of people don't know them outside of, you know, scoring Avengers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or Back to the Future. But they do they do beats, of course. It's like David Foster. David Foster will score a film in his sleep, but he'll make a dope Whitney Houston song too, which oh, he's okay. done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's done it already. He he'll he'll score a film, but he'll make dope Justin Bieber record. Done it. You know, so but as far as like beats, beat producers, obviously the OGs, DJ Battlecat is that's my bro, but that's one of my heroes. Superfly, uh, of course, mm -hmm. Dr. Dre, um, RZA. I'll go back to the OG, Riz, Jay Dilla, of course. Um, Dark Child, you know, Rodney Jerkins, Teddy Riley, mm -hmm. Jermaine Dupree, you know, Timberland everybody yeah. I, I i i'm literally able to appreciate every dog on body man freaking little john uh i mean the list goes on man I, yeah. i'll be here all day you already know of like, course especially yeah. if we get into like old school hip-hop oh i'll be sitting here till <laughs> december of this year <laughs> going down a list of all the dope producers but yeah you get it yeah yeah um now uh, as a follow-up to uh, talking about your last album, I'm really interested to hear how your next album is coming. I know you've been nearing the finish line. It's I'm I'm like at the eighty percent mark. Like it's it's just literally a few vocal stuff. I got to do a couple of solos here and there. Finish finish the bridge on this song. It's like I'm I'm at that place with it, but it's coming along good. It's night and day from hero dynasty for sure it's it's more nerd than hero dynasty nice. way more way I'm, more i'm excited maybe to yeah. help finish that bridge you could eat some strawberry peanut butter yeah, dog right. <laughs> i can find that junk man shoot <laughs> we're stalling japan put <laughs> yeah um well matt do you have any other particular questions i, do. Where, I have two if i could but yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. all right cool um uh i listened to uh that album uh yesterday uh last mm -hmm. night rather and i was blown away by uh 
a couple of things. Uh, but how long have you been working with Janae? Because it's a, a that tune, Miss You, is uh, yeah, yeah, it was uh, amazing. And I, I heard you Thank talk you, about um, uh, losing both of your parents. And, and, and um, my condolences, I know you said that was, I think that was in 2017. Uh, yeah, um, mom, yep. yeah, so I wanted to know is is that your mom's voice on the the yes, the, okay. That so was that my was, sister and my mother, yeah. Talking about seeing you on television. On the TV, yeah. And yeah, I, I, it, it it floored me. And and I I uh was listening to you talk about that and and it just uh the song was a, a completely unique way that I've heard someone deal with with loss like mm-hmm. that, just because it was it's not obscured, but you weren't you, yeah. it's just kind of a theme of not only lost, but celebrating what you had and what That's you exactly still have. It. Yeah, and That's I, exactly I it. yeah, I heard you yeah. talk about that, and it was it was deep, man. I, I just uh, uh, when you realize you had strengths, and you can't realize mm-hmm. those strengths until that happens. And I was Absolutely. fascinated to, hear you to talk about it. Absolutely, man. I had the biggest fear. I tell people all the time, you know, losing my father in two thousand six. That was so weird for me it's crazy man like i was getting my third mtd base built which is my seventh string i was getting that base built dedicated to my father and i was planning to surprise him and he died like what was it a month before it was finished right and when he got so 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 sick right before he went into his coma I I end up just telling him like, Dad, I was getting a bass made for you. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I remember after he died, I told Mike, I was like, I was discouraged. I was like, man, I don't even want it. And Mike was like, no, you're crazy. You're going to play this bass. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy. I've written so many freaking songs with that bass. But, you know, the thing is, man, I in that song, everybody has experienced loss, you know? And all these years traveling, when my mom got sick, I was so afraid that one day I would be in Dubai or something like that and I would get a call and I can't teleport, you know, I can't just show up there like I'm across the world. And for that to actually really happen to me, to be out here in Japan when it happened, it was something I didn't think I I would be strong enough to deal with, but I, I was okay. You know what I'm saying? And I just wanted to translate that in the music. And Janae, um, she could relate. You know, she she lost her brother to brain cancer. And um, I just, I remember writing her, I DM'd her. <laughs> she changes her number like every few months and I DM'd her like hey you know I don't know if you could but I wanted to see if you could just sing on this song dedicated to my mom and also my dad and my brother that died also back in the day and she saw it like a month later and was like of course right so shout out to Janae for that because she you know like she heard my cry you know what I'm saying and um I'll never, I'll never forget her doing that for me at all. Like we went to United Studios, the that's the studio where Frank Sinatra and Nat King Cole and you know Paul McCartney have recorded at. They're one of my favorite studios in L.A. And I was going up there to play on some stuff for her and help her with some vocal. Nah, I wasn't even helping her with vocal stuff at that point. I was just going up there to play on some stuff. And she was like, let's do it now. And she went in there. I got video footage. And she just went in there and ripped it. Literally went and ripped it. And there's one run on the song that she does, this soul jazz. Like, when it goes back down to the to the B, the B major seven. She came out of the, it's like a F, and she went into the B major. It's theoretically it's so like crazy that she heard that 
And she thought it was a mistake. She was like, wait, I maybe need to do that over. Meanwhile, I'm in the studio like, ah! <laughs> like <laughs> I, I lit like literally when she did it, it was like I was getting blasted by like a missile. Like, ah! like and I'm screaming, like, how did you even hear that? You know what I'm saying? And and she was like, I think I need to do that over. And I said, come out of the the, the vocal booth. And I said, listen to this. And I was like, do you hear this? She was like, that that wasn't wrong. I was like, no, like, are you kidding me? This junk is insane. Wow. It's just special, man, special. So sorry, I veered off no, into no, no. it. No, I wanted to hear you talk about it because yeah, I was, that, it, that record is really, I never heard anything like that. What you on all those tunes in there. And I do have to ask, who's hmm. playing guitar on Dream? Because I could Brandon Bay. Good. Yeah. He's ripping, ain't he? Yes. Yeah. And Brandon I was like, Bay, I was dude. like, I thought it might have been you, but then I just heard you say earlier you don't play guitar or uh, I can fake it. <laughs> Somebody, well, no, what was that... interesting was his command that his lines reminded me of how you play. So I was like, man, is this you playing guitar? Because mm-hmm. the touch was a guitarist so i was like it would it would make me annoyed if you were playing guitar that way shout out to brandon bay man brandon bay is one of the most quiet most underrated guitar players walking this earth that brother first off i i didn't even know about him until like I was doing getting ready to do that long tour in 2016 out here in Japan. And I was MDing it, putting the band together. And my homie Julian had told me about him, dude. And and like I saw a video of him. I was like, okay, yeah, he's dope or whatever. When I finally got a chance to hear this guy, I was like, dude, where where have you been? But he's like just just quiet, humble Korean dude just soft spoken just really you know like just chill man that dude is one of the coldest (laughs) one of my favorite guitar players that i've ever ever played with and i didn't play with every freaking body like that dude is insane man i love i love the way he played and i and i went looking i was like where i couldn't find the credit anywhere for the for the for that and i was like i was like oh must be you i thought you were doing no that is that is Brandon, and I'm glad you said that because I definitely filled out all the credits on the metadata. So I gotta, they gotta change that because that I want people to know that is Brandon Bay on guitar, and he he made he made that song. To He's me. killing it, like especially the the end, the solo he took, and everything. It was like he tapped all the way into 1987, like. Yeah, he was playing just, those it changes was perfect, beautifully. Man. And those changes, much like you were just yes. talking about with Janae going from the F to the B, those changes are moving mm-hmm. around and you you can't, mm-hmm. they're not, it's not the kind of thing where you can, where, where one run will cut it on three different places. Yeah. He was, he you was got it. beautifully. You can't just mess around with just, you know, one scale over one progression assuming that it's going to work over it like this isn't a relative thing it was an actual change yeah absolutely and he just was like oh but that's that's him though and he'll just do it with a straight face like yeah he was cascading all over just these beautiful uh, you know beautiful contours of what he was his tone was perfect the the all the little like rhythm stuff that he was doing during the the hook everything man that dude is just nasty man He's yeah nasty. <laughs> and then that leads me to one one other i mean i have so many questions now hearing you talk uh but i am after listening to that and, and seeing watching some of your other videos of you playing uh f- floored me the stuff with you and mono neon uh, oh, that's my dude, <laughs> and it, it actually reminds. It, 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 right, so I'll throw one more question in there because mm-hmm. I think he has. So I know he has perfect pitch, but mm-hmm. also does he? Is it is it the same the, the way you see colors with? You know, he said before that he doesn't have synesthesia like like that. He said that before, but mm-hmm. I mean, 
to me, the way I look at it is he just expresses the music in the way he dresses. Same as me. Like I'll wear, you know, I mean, well, I just, I'm into cosplay and I just like looking like an anime character. That's another conversation. <laughs> that's a different interview. We yeah. Might that's different, you know, sometimes you just want to be a Jedi when you wake up, but anyway, <laughs> he, he, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's, you know, League of Legends or whatever. But anyway, he just, I feel like he just puts the music, he wears it. You know what I'm saying? And to me, that is a type of synesthesia. Like, you know, if you look back in the past, like George Clinton dresses, he dresses and dressed back then how his music sounds, right? Earth, Wind & Fire, same thing. Bootsy, same thing. Like, they they look like what their music sounds like, you know. What what's his name? He had a he was from the UK. Uh, fame. Uh, oh, uh, David, 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 David Bowie. David same Bowie. thing. Like he looked, he dressed like that. You know what I'm saying? He so was a fashion icon, man. Yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. Right. One of my favorite OGs, same thing with like Phil Collins and stuff, James Brown, like they look like it. They look like their music, you know, yeah. Michael Jackson, Prince, they look like their music. So I feel like that's mono. That's his type of synesthesia. But yeah, perfect pitch for sure. You know. I But I think that's his synesthesia is is he just puts it on his body basically you know well when i th when i think about him and or when i think about you with the way you play that which, which is my my last question which is mm. um you have an astounding amount of ability on the instrument for lack of a better word chops yeah. um, but <laughs> what i'm fascinated to... by what's that i said i need to practice <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, it's all I, it's all I, it's all really? I can think of. Maybe a metronome would help. It would. You're right. It, a metronome would definitely help. Your groups Turn of nine and thirteen could be a little tighter. You, 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 that sounded like Donald Trump. That would. Really <laughs> well, I think it was the, the, the hand. Very good. Your groups very of good. nine and third a little tighter. The greatest. You know, the greatest. Your elevens. I don't like them. I don't. I just don't like them. They're they're the worst. <laughs> yeah, they're the worst elevens <laughs> ever. I mean, I I've had better elevens yeah. back when I was twelve. <laughs> yeah. People say I have the best septuplets. Oh. I mean, you know, it's what, it's what they say. It's what they say. You know, they they say I have the best triads. <laughs> you know, I have the best major pentatonic that there is. You know, it's it's what I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he speaks, you you see orange. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, truly? Yeah, that makes sense. I figured it was just that, or very, very white. <laughs> I do, I do, I do see heavy loads of orange, assorted oranges for yeah. sure. You could have stopped with heavy loads. That's all that. <laughs> Yeah. See, I see heavy loads for sure. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get canceled for talking about this guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't hey, know. At least you're out of the country, man. We're not politically safe here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It, it's racist. They called him orange. Oh my gosh. I mean, orange lives matter. I mean, they oh my gosh. Orange, <laughs> orange lives. Orange lives matter too. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Cancel them. They're ruined. Take everything he has on iTunes off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ruin their podcasts. Shame on them. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Where world are we living in now? <laughs> well, I think you had the right idea to is to to leave one behind and, and create a new one. Yeah, yeah. Get yeah. out, brother. Get <laughs> up out of there, man. <laughs> well, I'm Get sorry we digressed into the, the orange man. I, I but I did have a <laughs> a, a, a a question as far as what I'm curious about, mm. because it's clear that you hear mm. what you're playing, which is astounding on it on its own. But my my question is, um, did you when you were developing when you were I don't know how 
when you were mm. developing your technique, mm. was it, you seem to that that your technical ability always serves the melody. And mm. when you were younger, did you have a vision of that type of melody, or did you have a vision of the technique that that and then started to hear different types of melody? My guess is it's what you heard, but I was just curious how how you, how you were able it. to. Yeah, because chicken it, or the egg. <laughs> okay, great question. Phenomenal question. And I'm about to give you the most basic answer for it. Okay. Yes, I did hear it, but how you develop it is very simple. I'm going to ask you a question right now, right? And I want you to answer me as quickly as you can. What's one of your favorite foods? <clears throat> chicken. Okay. Now, here's another question. Remember, you told me chicken. Yep. Do you like steak? No. No? Okay. Do you like pasta? Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, watch this. I asked you a specific question. You gave me a specific answer. You thought of it and easily, quickly said it, right? Mm -hmm. Chicken. Think of music as conversation and questions, right? If somebody plays a chord for me, or if somebody plays a chord for you, better yet, if somebody plays a chord for you, the way I look at music is simply like this. If they play a chord for you and they tell you to say something over that chord, you want to say chicken every single time. You don't like steak, so why say steak? Steak might be what this school taught you to say this is the proper scale, this is the proper mode that you use in this situation. Nothing wrong with that, but do you actually want to eat steak or do you want to eat chicken if you have the choice? This is how I view music, right? So I'm going to try and make this make sense. There's one musician of all musicians, one type that uses this method pretty much 99% of the time. And do you know who that is? You know what type of musician it is? It's singers. When singers sing, they don't think, I'm going to sing a E flat minor pentatonic. I'm going to start on five, or I'm going to, oh, this is an augmented chord. I'm going to play a, a hexatonic. They're, they don't think about any of that stuff. All they do is just listen, right? And then they sing to their ability. Now, if we're talking about Stevie Wonder or Michael Bublé or Celine Dion or somebody like that. They know theory, right? But if Chris Brown walks in your house and you start playing My Sharia more, he's not going to be like, oh, I'm going to Phrygian the mess out of this song. Like, he don't know what the, that sounds like a medication to him. <laughs> hey man, you got some fridgy. <laughs> oh man, I ran out of mixolydian. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't know. They don't know it that, but what they have is they're not restricted by the rule book. They just listen and they execute based on what they're able to create with their imagination. So for me, how I develop this technique is I look at it the same way as singers or I look at it as simple as conversation if you play a chord for me I'm not going to focus on I'm not going to focus on a pattern or a shape it's nothing wrong with doing that it's and it's and I got friends that literally calculate everything they play mathematically with theory there's nothing wrong with that everybody can do whatever the mess they want but for me what i found is if i'm able to hear something in my imagination and translate it to my instrument there's 100 percent intention behind it i'm playing it because i actually want to not because this is what the correct thing is to play you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. oh i definitely yeah. see what you're yeah. saying so my mm -hmm. that i think you're answering that but you can't mm -hmm. accidentally create the ability that you have on the instrument so <laughs> when you were practicing or mm -hmm. playing however you want to look at it when you were 
on the way to unless you mm-hmm. just were able to do that from day one. I oh no, I had to train, I had to exercise it, but it's simple. It's simple. So if you're asking how do you do it, is that the question? How, how, how did you, how did you do it? Easy. But okay. If you picked up your guitar right now and play an E major chord, E major seven chord, listen to the chord and and ask yourself, what is the very first note that I hear? Not that I'm about to start playing because I know this pattern. I know the, you know, the, the shape. Throw all of that out the window. What's the first note that you hear? What's the second note that you hear? Okay, now you get that out. That's that's like the first stages of it. I would literally sit and play chords or either I would listen to some of my favorite songs. I would listen to John Patitucci and I hear how he's soloing over Got a Match. But what what would I say on this particular chord? What would I hear? Started with one note. Next thing you know, it went from that to being melodies, okay? I hear this particular chord. What's what's a melody that I could come up with right now, right? This is literally what singers do all the time. Later on, after, you know, maybe somebody uh, tell them, yeah, that was a dope scale you just sang. But going into it, they don't care flapjacks about that. It's just this note sounds good and these notes sounds good. Let me put them together. That's how you practice it. So you start with one, you can literally play any chord. What's the first note you hear? Do your best to imagine things that are outside of the chord. You don't want to play or, or sing the the same note that's in the chord, right? You want to sing something that's relative to it but just something that sounds good and then from there it it goes from one or two notes that you hear to a a melody to then eventually an entire phrase so you go from saying a word to basically quoting a poem that's what it is yeah that's why that's why I, i mentioned it like it's as simple as talking really we do we do it every day when we talk. Look at this. We didn't laughed. We didn't crack jokes. We didn't talked about people that we know. We didn't talked about food. We've had all this conversation easy, right? Because of this language. Why can't notes be that simple? We're literally putting thousands probably of words together. There's only 12 notes. It's only 12 notes. Even and I tell people this, even with perfect pitch, relative pitch. You guys know more than 12 people, right? Sure. You know, you know more than 12 people's names. You know, you can you're familiar with more than 12 voices. Right? Mm-hmm. You can literally be sleep. And a family member is at your house and you may didn't know that they're there, but as soon as you hear them talking in your sleep, you know that, oh, that's so-and-so they're here. Right. I used to do that when I was a kid, I would be knocked out on the couch and I would hear my uncle Stan's voice. And I knew if, oh, I hear uncle Stan, they're here. Right. How come we can remember all of that stuff, but 12 notes. It's just 12 notes. You see what I'm saying? Sure. Th- this this is part of the simplifying process for music to me that I stumbled upon it honestly by accident. I just, I was young. And when you're young, you don't, you don't like understand challenges yet when you're young, you know, like when you're a kid and you've never hurt yourself, especially we're boys, like I crawled up on top of stuff and didn't think to myself you could really injure yourself you haven't been hurt yet so you don't have that fear or that challenge implanted in your head when you're young i was a teenager and i was listening to john patitucci and alan hosworth and frank and bali and all these john mclaughlin and my initial thought was well i don't know what the heck they're doing but i'm listening to them do it so it must be possible right this is this is the way I look at it. So the truth of it, man, if I'm being honest with y'all, 
it's beyond a practice regiment. It's literally just it starts up here. It's it's how you think about it. If if you think of it as this calculus, you know, algebra thing, then that's exactly what's going to be for you. But if you look at it as like, oh, it's just a bunch of notes. And even as far as being fast and speed and all that kind of stuff, who says it's fast? It's just the way I hear it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how you practice it, start slow, play a chord. What's the first note you hear? Sing the note first, hear it, then sing it, then play it in the exact same pitch that you sing it. Next couple notes, same thing. Hear it, sing all the notes, play them, same pitch. Melody, sing the melody, play the melody. Phrase, at that point, by the time you get to where you're able to like actually do the phrases, you're going to literally be thinking of it at the exact same time that you play it. And everything is going to be intentional at that point. And you know what I found out? Maybe this is about to sound like Disney. Come on, Disney, hire me to write, write for you guys. You know what this, you know what it is? I always tell people if I'm able to create something that makes me feel something as it's being created, and if, if it makes me feel a certain way, just imagine what it's going to do for people that are listening, right? Yeah. This is why when we listen to people like all of our heroes, Alan Holsworth and Frank and Bali or Patatucci or whoever, when they're soloing or just playing whatever, we can feel something because they know what they're trying to play. It's not just pushing buttons like they really know, like Goucher, Andrew Goucher is one of the prime example watching, watching him. You can see that like he's singing it out, you know what I'm saying? But when you actually hear it, you feel what he's doing. He knows what he's trying to do. Yeah. So it, it changes the dynamic of your playing and, and, and what comes out. It's like everything is for a reason, not just because. It's not just because this is what they said you're supposed to play. Now, at this point, it's like, no, I know what they said you're supposed to play or what you can play. I don't care about that. This is what I'm going to play. And we'll worry about what it is theoretically later on. That's my whole philosophy. That's my whole thought process on it. That's so when people are like, oh, Bubby, you're amazing. And I'm just like, well, thanks. But I mean, it's it's just music. It's fascinating, man. Like I, I, I got to hang out with John Abercrombie a little bit and take some lessons from him. Yeah, and I remember he said uh, one way he would practice when he was younger was he'd have uh, somebody at the piano just play anything, any yep. chord, and then he would try one by one to find the notes one after the yep. other that worked with that chord. And uh, too. yep, yeah, and then and then he said to I, I remember saying to him, "Hey, man, you know." I'm going to make you wear your, your teacher cap for a minute. And, you know, after we played a bunch together and uh, I said, you know, what do you, what do you think? What advice would you give me? And he said, uh, maybe not play everything, you know, mm. mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, you know, and and that was a, some of the best, <laughs> some of the best advice I've ever gotten. Dude, I'm trying to tell you, man, that that's yeah. golden. That's golden. Like, I tell people this too, like, and forgive me if I'm rambling, y'all. I'm just oh, you know, talking. Man. But like another thing too is I tell people you can you can play something that's like all the right notes, right? And it'd be impressive. Sonically, tonally, it sounds good, it translates to people, but maybe they won't feel nothing from it. Flip the coin though, you could be literally trying to to speak to people and tell a story and be making a bunch of mistakes. I don't believe in mistakes, but for lack of a better, you know, quicker way to explain it, mm-hmm. you could be making a bunch of mistakes, not act, not playing the correct notes that you intended to exactly, but you're so in tune with this story you're trying to tell with all these mistakes. Even if people don't understand what you're trying to do, they still feel something. Mm-hmm. This is this is basically how jazz was invented, right? It's just freedom, right? So my thing is like if we can just kind of embrace that, it it you you'll feel 
more accomplished even just to yourself like you actually feel good about expressing yourself you know like honestly man that's all i care about doing like i don't care about impressing people I, i'm not concerned with that if i play i just want people to feel something right whether it's something simple whether it's something crazy complex is the one of the most hilarious songs that's that I've ever written is the first song off of my last record hero. Um, uh, what is it? Game of life. I don't even know what the heck that it was. It's like Sonic the Hedgehog with 10,000 pounds of cocaine. Like <laughs> it's, it's late nights, late nights. So yeah. Like so many chord changes, but <laughs> all I wanted to do is just express my love for video games and like classic 8-bit 16-bit games like sonic like mario and that's exactly what it was for me right or dude i'll never forget when i was making that song and i would and i like was done with the solo section i listened back to it and i was like man i don't even know how i'm gonna solo over this like the chords move really weird it did like no chord really repeats itself until the very end of the solo section before it goes. Like, it's just like, that was my first time really turning into Alan Holsworth, like just a random song with a thousand chord changes. <laughs> All right, go ahead and play press record, you know, but yeah. you know, man, everybody has different techniques. Everybody have different approaches and stuff but what i found if, if i'm able to be intentional with what i play it'll do something for me and for the people listening missing love yeah that's what it was it, you know obviously yeah i was crying when i recorded that solo thinking about my parents and my brother yeah but to hear somebody say man you know my aunt just passed away i listened to that song and it helped me out that's the point. Mission accomplished. That's that's the whole reason why. So connection. You know? That's it. That's it. That's beautiful, man. That's it. Sorry for the Disney talk. About no, that. dude, I love it, man. I hope you get the gig. I, I hope you get the gig. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Disney, man. Like, y'all need some new writers, man. Come on. What's wrong with Marvel Phase 4? Y'all need me. <laughs> y'all need me, man. Next Star Wars movie. Shoot. Yeah, next Star Wars movie, Disney delves yes. a bit into anime, you know, maybe. Yeah, they definitely, yep. Y'all get their own line me. of peanut butter. <laughs> call me, Disney. I can, I can, I'll help. I will help you. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you know, I think we've, I think we've held you long enough. We've, uh, this has been awesome, man. You're, you're the best. I appreciate you so much. Appreciate Bobby. y'all reaching out, man um and it's always yeah, so what a important. joy to talk to you man i i really enjoyed uh delving into uh listening to your things the last couple of days before this and then getting the chance to talk to you it's been amazing man hey man i'm just i'm just a fat country black kid from flint michigan fat country church boy food loving anime nerd black kid boy from flint michigan how do you say that in Japanese? Lost some weight. Uh, how do you say it? <laughs> Bakayaro. That's, that's a lot of adjectives. Bakayaro. That's what I am. <laughs> but no, man, it this was cool, man. I'm I'm chilling. I ain't doing nothing. Like I'm I'm wide awake. What is it? It's about to be one. I'm gonna probably turn on Netflix and watch JoJo Bizarre Adventure. And I'm going to be chilling. So y'all didn't bother me at all. This was great. I love to share, you know, different stuff, especially if it can help somebody. You know, there's a Disney talk again. Come on, Disney. <laughs> Come on, Disney. This a whole really, new really... world. <laughs> a whole new where We're almost there. <laughs> almost there. Like, a whole new on. peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> People come from everywhere. <laughs> Not if I have anything to do with it. <laughs> Not if I have anything to do with it. And not coming across the border. I would be the, I would be the best. I would be the best Disney writer. The, the, the best I, I mean I, so I've heard. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. So I've heard. <laughs> I'm gonna get an email in the morning from Donald Trump administration, like we come coming to sue you for bad mouthing the greatest president in the history of America. Yeah, yeah. You probably aren't going to be allowed at Nam this year. Nope. <laughs> it's going to be covered with orange tape. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, they're going to know. They're going to make the connection because you're flying in the Orange County Airport. I'm sure gonna... Orange County Airport. <laughs> yeah, right. He's, he's coming in Orange County Airport. <laughs> John Wayne. John... John Wayne, who's great, by the way. Yeah. Good friend of mine. Good friend of mine. Right. Exactly. <laughs> the best. Talk to him. Boy. Talk to him all the time. <laughs> good, good friend of the family. You put orange tape around the doors. Put orange cones on the streets. You might have a future in this. Uh, you might be the next Daily Show correspondent. You keep this kind of stuff up. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to get canceled for that. <laughs> uh, I'll probably well, say something worse in the next episode. I'm going to do that <laughs> for the show. Don't worry. I'll cover your tracks, Bobby. <laughs> hey, man. Some some of us got to be bold, man. We got to be bold. And we're from a different time, too, man. We're from a different time. You know, we don't. We don't uh we don't hurt about everything that's said, you know, coming from our generation. So no shade to the to the young folks nowadays, but yeah, you get it. No, but the joy was yeah. in the engagement, even if you didn't you know, that yes. you're still engaged. You yeah, still, all the you time. Still had a conversation. Yeah, of that, course. That's what that's where the whole cancel thing's not gonna really Oh my gosh. Now it's gonna be a pretty boring society at that point. Nowadays it's like, oh my gosh, you don't you don't eat vegan food. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> the poor animals. Ah! And you're like, damn, man, that horse was delicious. <laughs> 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 that yeah. poor fish. <laughs> he has a pet fish. Oh, my goodness. Ah! Yeah. Ruin him. <laughs> burn, burn his family to the stake. Ah, do you know yeah, how many anime crazy. characters had to die to make one of your albums, Bubby? <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> do you know? Do you know how many Star Wars characters there were to have to use to have to make that Naboo song? Oh my goodness! <laughs> the, the, the poor Gungan tribe. That's cultural appropriation. The Gungan so. Much. Jar Jar Binks is racist. It's racism. Dude, it's one of the most hilarious characters ever. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> an, oh, in, an, an idiot frog creature. It's a great character. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yep. I'm kind of the Jar Jar Binks of podcasting, really. I'm weird. <laughs> People are confused by me. <laughs> I love Jar Jar Binks, man. He's like, I love everything about episode one. I don't care what nobody says. That, that's the worst Star Wars, man. That junk was great. Yep, that's the first one I saw. It was I love it. Great, dude. It was great, man. It was great. Like, young Obi Wan Kenobi, come on, man. Like, are y'all kidding me? You know, like, the introduction of Mace Windu, all of that, everything about that. I, I don't need I don't even want to get started on that. We'll be here another seven hours oh by talking about <laughs> dude, like oh my Qui-Gon Jin, bro. Like, come on, man. I'm hold I'm holding back so many more questions. I'm holding me gotta, too. Oh my goodness. You're, you're, when you, to do you're always welcome back. Yeah, when and when you Please. drop the album, if you want to uh do some more promotion, you know where to yes. go. But Again, yes. man, you're the best. I appreciate you. Not at all, um, man. It's nothing. And uh, hopefully, nothing. we'll see you, see you at a Nam at some or something at some point. I don't know, hey, man. Y'all come out to Nam this year, man. It's in April. Try right, and get man. there, man. We'll go. Eat. Oh, I didn't even realize. Is it really in April? I was thinking it was yeah. like next week or two weeks from now. It's not. No, nah, in- man. They they're they're trying to get it back to January, uh, but. The other, this is, well, it's not probably top secret anymore. So the first thing was they're trying to get it back to January, like gradually. But the other thing is that they're trying to just combine summer and winter and they're putting it in the middle. So oh, they're not going to do the, uh, is that Nashville? I don't know just yet. I, I You probably could talk to Mike. He'll know. 
Him Actually, it was with no. Mike that I, because Mike, when I was going to go last time, Mike said I could yeah. go on. Even Charlie said, just come out on yeah. their, their, on their thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I, if know. it's in April, I might I might give them a call and uh, see if uh, I can go because that actually man. works better for me. Yeah, I'm definitely coming back. I mean, unless I'm busy with my band or something out here, I'm for sure coming back. I'm going to go every day. Uh, I just want to go and eat, honestly. I just want to eat pork rinds with cheese Whiz and God damn. nuts. Oh, yeah. That's and how after we talk- you eat all that. Yeah. And these things start coming out of you. What <laughs> color? What color do you see then? Because pork pine, pork rinds, orange. orange. There's no, <laughs> there's no orange. way that room smells good. There's no it's way. It's all it's all orange, brother. That you know, it's funny that you talk to Mike about this. Mike and Dan. That's actually Charlie. They all know it's been a tradition now for like uh, since 2010 or 11. Okay. Like pork rinds, when I started doing my diet, you know, like the before I knew it was called keto, just high protein diet. I was doing that or either paleo diet again, just high protein diet. That's what I was calling it. But uh, pork rinds is like a, a good snack on the diet. Right. And I'm hood. I'm from the hood. So I was putting cheese whiz on it, which is superb, by the way. I do. I'm from the country. I put my cheese whiz on wheat mm. thins. Oh, it's phenomenal! It's phenomenal. Phenom- my wife looks at me like, Dude. "I'll eat the whole can, man." Dude. I can't help but cheese Dude. whiz. The like, <laughs> yeah, like literally, I, I've done it so many times. So randomly, one year, <laughs> I, I I brought some bags of pork rinds to Nam, and Mike or Dan was like, "Are those?" what did he say are those pork skins and i was like yeah and i we just started eating it and i had cheese whiz and Mm. i told them like yo you got to try this it's like a ham and cheese sandwich it's it's so ghetto but it's so good it's so ghetto and like i talk to mike i'm telling you just be like like bubby says something about pork skins and cheese whiz he's probably going to start busting up laughing okay and yep. that is that is the tradition now. So I literally I show up to Nam show with like five bags of pork rinds and like four different flavors of cheese whiz. And I take a couple of bags to Mike, a couple of bags to Eric Coco, a couple of bags to Roland, Groove Gear, GK. And literally I, I make sure to go to I eat, I sup with everyone. I go to each of the booths and I sup and we just sit and talk. We don't care about music, none of that. We just talk. Yeah, you can't be handling any of those MTDs with pork rinds and cheese with no. all over your hands, Madison. No, and Mike has definitely <laughs> told was, people. I thought that Mike, was how you got your tone. <laughs> I can really hear. I can really hear the whiz <laughs> in your technique. I can. I can hear the the the. The sauciness of the cheese and your technique. And full disclosure, I could eat all the different flavors of cheese whiz. They all taste the same to me. They're oh, all they're delicious, great. but I can't they're tell the great. difference between the American and the sharp. Like, American, the sharp cheddar, the regular okay. cheddar, the, the bacon cheddar. That one is actually, that one is good. Mike and Dan don't like that one. Okay. They don't like that one. They 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 like the cheddar one, and they can tolerate the American cheese one. I love it. It's like the cheddar cheese sharp one. cheddar. So good, man. The American so cheese good. one you know doesn't I mean? taste like American cheese to me. It just tastes like no. a, it's tangy, it's salty, it's fatty, it's tangy, delicious. salty. Yeah. Yeah. Watered down like cheddar is what it tastes like. That's but what it it's tastes like. So, to me. Yeah. so good. And and the key is you have to get either the spicy pork rinds or the barbecue pork rinds. I just, I've only, as hey, come to Nam, got, guys. It's, a, it's a sea salt wheat thin. That's it for me on that one. I'll have to, but then again, I don't eat a lot. I don't like ham and cheese sandwiches, so. but if it's in April and, and I'm there, I will definitely join you for one. It of is them. literally, it is literally a tradition. And, and the, aside from that is I bring peanut butter. My, my buddy Dave from Toronto, he brings peanut butter 
And generally, if I got a homie coming from Australia, they bring Nobby's peanuts. Okay. Nobby's nuts. That's their tradition. This has literally been years, year long tradition. Like I walk around now with food and everybody's like, oh, Bubby Lewis, <laughs> are you going to play anywhere? And, <laughs> and I'll be like, uh, no, I'm about to go eat though. So people will literally be staring at me. This happened last NAM show in 2020. There was this massive crowd of people standing around like with their phones ready. And I'm just sitting there with Dan just eating pork rinds. <laughs> and, and I was like, sorry, y'all, y'all gonna have to wait a little bit. Like, this is my meal for the day. And I have my water and everything. Like, it's tradition, man. Y'all will see. Y'all will see. Uh, it's yeah. tradition. Snoop should have a cooking show with you. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that because he can cook too. He can definitely cook. That dude is a mean cook. He cooks some amazing fried chicken. I bet. Yeah. Um, well, uh, before we wrap it up, do you got any or uh, any shout outs you want to give? Uh, tell people what they need to look out for project wise and where they should look for you online. Um, I mean, shout out to my band, Silver Kid. Shout out to my buddy, Eddie, the Bubby and Eddie stuff. Thank you all. If you checked out the Silver Kid music, thank you. If you checked out the Bubby and Eddie stuff. Pour me a drink. Uh, yep, pour Love me it. a drink. A good all hook. of that. Thank you, man. Um, shout out to all the companies. And, you know, every time I do this, I always fear that I'm going to miss somebody. But MTD, GK, Rolling Boss, V Moda, Labella Strings, Bartolini, Hip Shot, Groove Gear, Soundbrenner, 64 Audio, Reason Studios, Personas. And I think that's everybody. And Cheese Whiz. And Cheese Whiz. <laughs> Y'all give me a sponsorship too. Please let me. Yeah. I'll I'll endorse the mess out of your product. But yeah, shout out to them. Shout out to my wife. And I'm my just about and, to to, yeah. to order some 64 audio in ears. So. Nice, man. And they're I didn't mean that was a silly place to cut off while you were thanking. No, they're dope, man. They're <laughs> dope. They're dope. They're super dope, man. I love 64. Shout out to them guys. But yeah. six yeah, driver, man, that's, that's one for the in ear. The custom six drivers, the one you can do the six. You can do the six. I my first ones, I did the eight, and the ones I have now, I think the ones I have now are the 12. Oh. But the, the sixes are dope too, though. Like, I, I want to get six drivers too. It's just, you know, it's different nuances of tone and stuff that you get. I've never had nice. custom in years, so I didn't know where to start. And I was like, I, I watch reviews, talk to people, listen to, and they're like, yeah, for mm. guitar players, six is probably the, the, the six. four, or six is the way to go. Yeah, six is the one for guitar players. Eight is more for bass players. It has, uh, more leveled out low end it's not like crazy like beats headphones or nothing like that but it's just like a a nice mix for bass but six for sure for guitar it's like flat but like the clean brightness and stuff like that yeah they're nice they're nice okay yeah if you say six then that's the fun that's all i need they're to hear nice. I'll, I'll definitely for go sure with for okay. sure nice yeah perfect yeah that's awesome good. well yeah. uh yeah, everyone follow uh Bubby on Instagram, uh, you know, Facebook, whatever wherever we they can find you, Bubby. Oh, follow there. keep an eye out for the new album. Listen mm. uh to to all your all your albums. Um here I mean mm. I'm a huge fan of Hero Dynasty and it's a Thank plus you. one or Adventures one and Quests one up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one up. Pretty yeah, much yeah. plus one, yeah. You yeah, 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 yeah. And uh and um, you know, be sure to check out Silver Kid's new EP cloud nine awesome mm -hmm. my favorite song off of that is milky way so funky nice um, man i love and, that song yeah and uh make sure you you like comment and subscribe for our videos because we need yes. we need the help over here yeah. <laughs> you or youtube or wherever you're listening to this yeah. but we appreciate you listening we appreciate bubby lewis being with here today or uh, mm -hmm. with us here today and uh till next time bubby thank you again yeah bubby thank, thank you, you so much man a pleasure not a problem, man. Anytime, especially if y'all want to talk about food and nerd stuff, I let's do it. Oh, I could have talked way more about them. We'll get to it. Don't worry. Eight <laughs> hour, eight hour slot. We got to We need at least eight hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. All right, man. Well, you have a good night over there. Ooh. And uh, yeah, yeah, catch you around. Awesome, man. Y'all be blessed, man. I got you. you. Thank you, man. Peace, 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 peace. All right, so what am I hitting here, Brad?
I don't know. I was gonna. I was. I figured Bubby was gonna exit, and then I was gonna. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know if y'all was turning it off or what. I don't know. I could leave. I was gonna say something to Matt after. I don't, Awkward. There's no good. There's no good way to end a Zoom. Like All right, we might as well start part two now. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so peanut butter with kiwi in it. <laughs> seriously though, seriously though, if y'all ever want me to do this again, like bro, I'm I'm t- like. Next week I'm gonna be a little busy because like, I start rehearsing. <laughs> Don't tempt us, dude. We can have you on. <laughs> Any, we yeah, we, like, we oh, can honestly, call this the Mink Mug and the Bubby. We could just <laughs> weekly if you want, man. And I, I'll be a guest whenever y'all want, man. I got I got so many stories of things I've witnessed of getting held at gunpoint by the military in Germany. I got all kinds. Oh of my stuff, God. Man. Bonus episode. Bonus <laughs> oh, episode. <man. laughs> you have, bro, you have no idea. Some of the things that I have seen in my country lifetime, you have no idea. Wow. Stuff. Y'all just let me know, man. I'm, I'm especially at nights. Like I'm, I'm up, I'm chilling. You You'll know? be hearing from us. You'll be Definitely. hearing from yeah, us, we man. Can do this anytime, yeah, brother. Quite a few more times. All right. Anytime, man. Anytime. So yeah, y'all uh y'all be safe out there, man. I'm gonna put on JoJo Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> Turn it on now. <laughs> sure, you could slap your laptop down then and we'll just uh we'll, yeah, we'll cool. catch you on the next one. Yeah, get out All of right, the so... Zoom meeting so I can tell I Matt how awesome Please. this went. Please, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Y'all y'all be easy, man. All right, right, have a good night, man. Peace.